जय राधा कुंज बिहारे Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 Hari Hari Hare Krishna Bolo Krishna Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram Ram Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 
Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 3, Yamaraj instructs his messengers, this is verse number 23. <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Charanam Mahat Mahatmyam Namo Charana Mahatmyam Hare Pasyante Putrakaha Ajamilo pihe naiva Mrityu pashad amuchyata Namotcharanam mahatmya Hare pasyata putrakaha Ajamilo pihe naiva Mrityu Pashyad Amuchyata Namo Charana Mahatmya Hare Pasyata Putrakaha Ajami Lopi Enaivam Mrityu Pasyad Amuchyata Hey, what's 
Ladies. <laughs> Of the holy name, name. Uchcharana, of the pronunci pronunciation of the pronunciation, pronunciation of the pronunciation, Mahatmyam, the exalted position, Harehe, of the supreme Lord, Pasyata, just see, Putrakaha. O my, dear servants, o my dear servants, who are like my sons, like my sons. Ujamila, Ujamila. Api, Api, even Ajamil, who was considered greatly sinful. Yena, Yena by, the by the chanting of which, Eva, Eva certainly, certainly. Mrityupashat, of the ropes of death, death Amuchyata was delivered. So what is happening now is that the uh, Yamadutas have just returned from their attempt to take the uh, soul of <coughs> Ajamil to Yamaraj, where they have failed. Now they are bewildered <laughs> and they need an explanation. <laughs> And so they're hearing from their leader, uh, Yamaraj, and he's giving the understandings. Translation, my dear servants, who are as good as my sons, just see how glorious is the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. The greatly sinful Ajamil chanted only to call his son, not knowing that he was chanting the Lord's holy name. Nevertheless, by chanting the holy name of the Lord, he remembered Narayana, and thus he was immediately saved from the ropes of death. Srila hmm. Prabhupada's purport. There is no need to conduct research into the significance of the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The history of Ajamil is sufficient proof of the power of the Lord's holy name, and the exalted position of a person who chants the holy name incessantly. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has a vibe. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalo, Kalo Naste, Vanaste, Vanaste, Vagatir Anyata. In this age of Kali, no one can perform all the ritualistic ceremonies for becoming liberated. That is extremely difficult. Therefore, all the Shastras and all the Acharyas have, have recommended that in this age one can chant the holy name. Om Ajnan Timidandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Sri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Paschatya De Sitarine Vanchakopa Tarubhishya Kripa Sindhu Pebhacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Asari Ghor Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So this pre- previous verse and this verse and about the next three or four verses are a series of topics specifically on the chanting, of the glories of chanting of the holy name of the Lord. And there is, it says that there's no need to know to go into any research about how great the chanting of the holy name or how powerful it is, how supremely glorious it is. This proof of this example here, the life of a Jamil, is evidence that simply by uh, he he didn't even chant purely. <laughs> he chanted to call his son. But Srila Prabhupada mentions, and also the Acharyas mentioned that, when he heard his na- the, the name of Narayan being called by himself, he heard his own voice, at that point he remembered the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And because of that, um, he got, what would he say, liberation. In other words, he was freed from all the reactions of all his sinful activities. And we can see in the life of Ajamil, for most of his life, he was just a young boy when he fell into the clutches of this uh, association of this prostitute and wound up uh, arranging for her to become his wife. And that was, he was just a young man. And now he's 88 years old, <laughs> 88 years old. And so he lived, a, you know, a very, what we say, inglorious life, very sinful. The uh, activities he performed are mentioned in different places by the Acharyas in their commentaries on this particular pastime. But they explained it in you know, he cheated, he lied, he stealed, he even kidnapped people, held them for ransom to get money. He was always looking for money <laughs> because he had a very expensive wife. <laughs> and because of that, he was doing everything to satisfy her. And she was giving him sense gratification. And um, so you can see you know, we can see from this example how a very, a, a, not very, but a, 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 an average saintly person, somehow or other, just by a little inattention, somehow becomes victimized by sense gratification or by, by a certain kind of consciousness that um, changes their whole life. I was, uh, I was, I preach in the area of Croatia and Slovenia. So the brahmacharis were now were out on Sankirtan. One brahmachari wanted to do Sankirtan by himself. He had his own plan. So he was out there preaching and giving out books. This was during the marathon, Christmas marathon, many years ago. So he was living by himself also. And one day while he was... Uh, on the computer, he somehow hit the wrong button on the computer. <laughs> and he saw something he shouldn't have saw. <laughs> but somehow it attracted his mind, and then he uh, dwelled on it for a little while, not long. Then he realized it was what he was doing was wrong and contaminating, so he stopped. But that, that time period where he was ob- somewhat absorbed in these wrong images that he saw, really polluted his mind so badly that he couldn't, he couldn't chant after a while. And he couldn't even do his devotional service. He came to me and he was telling me, asking me how I could help him. <laughs> and uh, so the impression on the mind, even though it was a virile oppression, wasn't even a live oppression, <laughs> He uh, really can change his whole consciousness, and it disturbed his whole Krishna uh, conscious service in such a way that it took him a long time. He got back to normal, but it was difficult <laughs> because he was sincere. But uh, just you can see that the padam padam ya vi padam. It's a very dangerous place, and those dangers not only come in for a form of physical calamities, but they also come in 
And uh, the objects of the senses that can pollute the mind of a, a devotee, even a very serious devotee, if they dwell on these things. And this is what happened to Ajamil. And so much so that you know, he practically forgot. He was even married at the time. <laughs> he gave up his previous wife, didn't even go back home anymore, and simply um, made his life uh, in connection with this uh, low-class person. So the, the material world is full of dangers, especially for one who is seriously engaged in devotional service. Therefore, one has to be very conscious and cautious. <laughs> conscious of Krishna and cautious not to act or think in the wrong way that could bring one again into the, uh, into the uh, what we say, the clutches of the material energy. And the objects of the senses are pretty strong. Even Srila Prabhupada was talking about his own self, that he, was, he drives on airplanes. And we all know Prabhupada travels from place to place, going to different places preaching. And on these airplanes, they also show movies. <laughs> so these movies are available and people see them. Nowadays, they have individual where you just sit there and you watch the movie. Before they had one big screen in the middle of the you know aisle up on the top and everybody was watching the same screen. But that's the time when Prabhupada was traveling. So Prabhupada was telling us afterwards, he said, you know, we see these images and we can't even get them out of their, our mind. They disturb our mind. And Prabhupada was even talking about his own self. Of course, he was just using that as an example to teach us. But uh, this is how the uh, material energy works. It creates these uh, so-called attractions in this world in such a way that we can forget about Krishna. <laughs> we can forget about what is our real duty in life. And again, become victimized by the material energy. Therefore, keep good association. <laughs> If you keep good association, that one devotee, as I mentioned, that brahmachari, what was his fault? He he was alone. <laughs> if he was with another person, that person would say, hey, you're in Maya, stop doing what you're doing, you know. He would have had some hope or some help. We also have the example of Bart Maharaj in the Shastras. How um, after retiring from his position as a great king of the world, he went into the forest to perform his bhajan and then gradually leave the world. But he got attracted to a baby deer who was left by his mother unprotected. And he, his attraction became, what we say, continuous in such a way that he gave up doing his puja, his, his prayers, his worship, and centered his whole time and attention around taking care of this little baby deer. And it said it almost became like a romantic affair. It describes it and in that way. And he was actually feeling loving relationships for this deer. <laughs> so much so that when he left the body in that situation, he immediately attained a deer's body in his next life. Fortunately, because he was a great devotee of the Lord, he received a special mercy of the Lord. And what was that mercy? He was able to remember why he fell down and why he was in his present situation. And so in that deer's body, he simply um, went around. He didn't associate with other deers. He went and went to associate with the sadhus who were talking and discussing philosophical and transcendental subject matters and he kept hearing like that he finished his life in that dear body and then he had to take one more birth and we all know that birth was Judd Bart <laughs> who was he didn't want to do anything in connection with the material world in fact he would act the opposite of all proper behavior and etiquette just he acted like a madman so he wouldn't be bothered by the common people <laughs> He would be left alone, so he could simply meditate on Krishna within the heart. Jai Sri Sri Radha Kunja Bihari Ki Jai Sri Sri Gornitai Ki Jai. So we're hearing here. Prabhupada gets very much right to the point in the pre in the following um, 
verses, he expands on the glories of the holy name. But here he gets right to the essence and he just says them. that in this age, <laughs> there is no other means for what we say, elevation to this perfectional stage than glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And that glorification is centered around Krishna's holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. Uh, Kali Kale, Nama Rupa, Krishna Avatar, Nama Hoite, Haya Sarva, Jagat Nistara. That Krishna has incarnated in the sound of his name. His name is non different than him. To understand that philosophically or even logically is not possible. How is it possible that a name of an individual or even, even the name of a, the Lord can be the same as the Lord? But that is the nature of the absolute realm, whereas everything in relationship to itself is as good as itself. So Krishna's name, his qualities, his forms, his activities are identical with him as the personality of God and there's no different. And all of the energies, qualities, forms, path, everything is attained within the name. Nija, Sarva, Shaktis, Diversity, Charyas say that all of everything of the Lord is found in the holy name of the Lord. There was one devotee, senior devotee in our movement. He was giving a class, Srimad Bhagavatam class, and Srila Prabhupada was personally present at the time. He was a sannyasi. And uh, Prabhupada wanted to listen to see how much his disciples learned. So he would sit there and listen sometimes to the classes. Of course, you know, if you, if you were sitting there and Prabhupada was, if you were giving a class and Prabhupada was sitting there, uh, you went on, I would sink into the chair and just kind of hide or something. <laughs> it's like, how can you speak in front of Srila Prabhupada? Uh, but, you know, he was asked and Prabhupada was encouraging him. So he kept, he, and in, at one point in his lecture, he said, uh, and Krishna is in his holy name. <laughs> and Srila Prabhupada stopped him. <laughs> And he said, where in his name is he? <laughs> so in other words, he didn't explain correctly. So Prabhupada wanted to make a point. And then he understood, yet no, Krishna is not in his name. He is his name. <laughs> There's a difference. His name is him. There's no difference between Krishna and his name. So in this age, we have, the, this is called the bright light in this age, Kaler Doshani Dehrajan Asti Eko Mahagun, Kirtana Eva Krishna Syan Mukta Sangam Param Bajet. This verse spoken by Srila Sukadev Goswami to Maharaj Pariksit kind of sums up everything in, in the essence of the practice of Krishna consciousness because in this verse, it says, Kaler dosha nidi. Nidi means, means ocean, and dosha means false. That in this age, there are so many problems. <laughs> Even in, within the society of devotees, there are problems. Problems, problems, problems. Just the age of Kali. <laughs> and, you know, people in this age are very unqualified to practice spiritual life, and they're easily disturbed by what goes on within their life. And so it's a very difficult age. And there's always problems around, there's wars, pestilence, political leaders who are not qualified to lead people, it's just, it's a long list. <laughs> the 12th canto, and even in parts of the 11th canto, and goes into details of the anomalies in this age, it's so, extensive and so deep. And Prabhupada used to say when he would speak about this, about the age of Kali, he'd say, don't stick around, finished in this life. Because if you stay around, you're gonna see Kali Yuga is gonna get worse. In other words, don't come back. 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us the formula to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, associate and serve Vaishnavas, and uh, become concerned about the fallen conditioned souls by giving them a chance to come to Krishna consciousness. Nam Ruchi, Vaishnav Seva Jiva Doya Lord Chaitanya has summarized this whole process in these three principles. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur enunciates it in his writings and in his songs. So he's given us the easy and very direct formula. Everything is there in his, these activities. So we want to, uh, we don't want to come back again to this material world and have to take birth again. You have to take birth again, you have to learn how to talk again, and you have to learn how to walk again. You have to start doing all of those things that little babies are just beginning to do. Uh, so it's a very unpleasant thought to think they have to come back again to go through all of this, and then maybe, maybe I'll meet the devotees again. Of course, it's usually guaranteed, but you may take a long time, it may take years before you actually, actually come back to Krishna consciousness. So birth in this material world is always fraught with so many difficulties, and so, especially in Kali Yuga. So Prabhupada would say, you know, finish in this lifetime. In other words, take this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra seriously. What does it mean by seriously? It means that there are many things that we can do, both in our, in our material responsibilities and in our spiritual practice. But make the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra first. <laughs> make that the most important thing in your life. And by doing that, then Krishna will see that, that he, he, this person is serious about receiving my mercy. And therefore, Krishna will, will be more easily available through the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So, um, and I always recommend the devotees, because something we sometimes we think, well, we have 16 rounds to chant, we've made some commitment, and there's 24 hours in a day, right? So, so I have 24 hours to finish my 16 rounds. <laughs> But if you listen to the Acharyas, and especially the Srila Prabhupada, he says, finish your rounds early. <laughs> Make your rounds and the, the foundation for the beginning of the whole day. I recommend, and this is just as my, I recommend you do, you chant 16 rounds before you do anything. <laughs> if you can do it, I mean, if there's no emergencies in your life that you have to attend to within that early morning period, and don't go to bed late. <laughs> if you do stay up too late, you can't get up early enough. And the early morning hours are actually conducive because the atmosphere is nice for meditation, for prayer, for not worrying about whatever else you have to do. That'll come later in the day. You can focus. But if you don't f finish your rounds early, and as many throughout the day, then you also, also have your material responsibilities and your general responsibilities. You think, I have so many rounds to do, I have to squeeze it in here, I have to put it in here, do I have time, where am I gonna do it? Now it's nine o'clock, I have 12 rounds done. Those last four rounds take forever, you know, it's the late night Joppa Club, and you just can't, you're struggling, and you're just thinking, I can't wait to get this last round done. And when you get to the last round on the last beat, you say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. You put the beads on a hook, see you tomorrow, you know. <laughs> wow, I made it. <laughs> it's only 10 o'clock, but I've, I made it. <laughs> so we don't want to, you know, that's not actually the recommended way to um, arrange your you know, devotional life. And the chanting of the holy names of the Lord is actually the most important thing we can do. And if we chant nicely and early, we have the foundation and the strength and the mercy to deal with whatever we have to deal with without the day. In other words, we're, we're equipped to take on the responsibilities and challenges throughout the day. That comes by the, the, the chanting the early rounds early in the morning. 
So, of course, the glories of the holy name are as unlimited as Krishna himself, as it's mentioned here. But sometimes we see that devotees struggle with chanting, and they think, this chanting is too hard. I've met people who actually have been struggling for a long time, and they think, you know, maybe if I give it up and I just read books or, uh, you know, just associate with the devotees and just do some service, then um, life will be better and easier because I'm just struggling and there's no taste. So uh, there's one little antidote, it's a story. I heard it's by one great soul, he was explaining this whole so story. There was one young boy, <laughs> he had been practicing Krishna consciousness, he was initiated by his spiritual master. And uh, he was thinking after struggling for so long, I should give up chanting the holy name. I, I can't do it anymore. But I can't make that decision on my own. I, ha I should approach my spiritual master and let him know how I feel. He'll probably understand. So he goes to his spiritual master. He's very humble. And he's very repentant. He says, Guru Maharaj, you know, I can't. I just can't chant anymore. It's too difficult. I would rather be doing other activities. It takes me so long to chant and I don't have any, any taste for chanting. I'd like to give it up. So his spiritual master is very thoughtful. So rather than ordering him not to or trying to convince him to, to continue, he said, all right, if you want to do that, but before you do that, I have a little service for you I want you to do. And the boy says, okay, well, what is that? He says, well, if you just go, he points in a direction, there's a, there's a stream in that direction, a little stream, and there's a bird who comes every day, he stands by that stream, he's a crane, he stands on one leg. I want you to go as close as you could to that bird and just say, Hare Krishna. That's all. Yeah, he thinks, all right, that's an easy service. <laughs> So he goes, he sees the bird, he gets, you know, a distance away, and he says, as loud as he could, Hare Krishna. And the bird goes like this and falls over and dies. <laughs> Comes back to his spiritual master. He's a little disturbed. And he tells his spiritual master, the bird died. Spiritual master says, that's okay, don't worry. Uh... There's, I want you to do it again. I have another uh, living entity. I want you to go now in the Goshala. One of our cows has given birth to a calf just today. So I want you to go where that calf is, get next to the calf and say, Hare Krishna. <laughs> so he's obedient and goes gets next to the calf, says, Hare Krishna. And the calf just rolls and dies. Now he's really distraught. <laughs> he comes running back to his spiritual master. Spiritual master says, don't worry. I want you to do it one more time. Okay. He's obedient. He says, the king of this area is my disciple. He's your god brother. He just... His wife just gave birth to a baby boy. And the, hot, even the whole palace is excited. The king is giving out presents. Go to the, to the king and says, I am your godbrother. I've come on behalf of your spiritual master to give blessings to your newborn son. So he's thinking, hmm, what's this going to be like? All right, but he's obedient. So he goes, and he somehow is able to get in where the king is. The king is really smiling. He's meeting everyone, shaking hands, giving out gifts. He's so happy. The little baby's there with the mother in another room. And uh, he comes and he says, I am your, your god brother, and uh, Guru Maharaj has sent me to give blessings. I, I heard that you, you, had a, you know, had a son. Oh, Guru Maharaj knows about it. Very well, wonderful, wonderful. And you've came to give blessings on behalf, please. The baby's there in with the mother, go. So he goes and he gets next to the baby and says, Hare 
Krishna. <laughs> and the baby rolls his eyes and dies. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> So the mother is like, she doesn't know what to do. She's lost. And the, the word gets back to the king, and he is like, besides himself, both in anger and bewilderment. He doesn't know what to think. So he's, now he calls his guards. He says, arrest this person and give him a, torture him and give him a slow death. <laughs> so he's about to be taken away, and then... From, from the body of the baby, a beautiful Gandharva-like being comes out of it, goes up in the air, has four arms, and looks at everyone. The king is there. Everyone sees and says, Thank you very much. I was cursed to take three births. One is a crane, one is a calf, and is a baby boy in this king's... Now I can go back to the spiritual world. Thank you. <laughs> and so... Everyone sees it, and the king gets a little bit pacified, and, and he frees him. He goes back to his spiritual master, and the spiritual master says, you still want to give up the chanting? <laughs> so we don't really know. We can never really estimate, and we'll never know, the glory and power of the, the holy name of the Lord. And there's so many examples, both in the Shastras and in, in the lives of the devotees, how by chanting the holy name of the Lord, everything becomes auspicious. And even the most dangerous situation becomes, uh, becomes destroyed by the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. So we can't, as we mentioned, the glories of the holy name are as unlimited as Krishna himself. So but we should, uh, Prabhupada says here, we should chant incessantly. Satatan kirtayan tomam yatantas tastara vritaha yatantas tastara nitya nitya yukta upasate always chanting my glories uh, bowing down before me worshiping me these great souls worship me in devotion and Prabhupada if you if you read Prabhupada's books <laughs> And you hear his lectures, and you make note of what he's saying. He says, he should chant 24 hours a day. He says it many times. <laughs> many times throughout the scriptures, he, uh, throughout his lectures, he, he mentions that. And there was one, there's one particular story in the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Well, there was one, in, one man, he was a great soul, actually, and he was always chanting Hare Krishna. Constantly, couldn't stop chanting the Hare Krishna. In fact, he, he was so much absorbed in chanting Hare Krishna that even if he wanted to stop, he couldn't. <laughs> so now he was on his way. He's walking. He's on his way to go to the latrine, a dirty place. And he's thinking, I have to go into a dirty place and I have to bring the holy name in there? This is not right. So I have to stop chanting. But how can I stop chanting? I can't. <laughs> He's thinking like this. So he decides to hold his tongue. <laughs> so he can't chant. <laughs> He's trying to hold it. So he's walking along holding a to his tongue. And there's a young boy. He comes and he says, Hey, Babaji, what are you doing? <laughs> he said, Well, and he explains, I, uh, I, uh, I can't stop chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And I have to take care of, you know, nature. And I have to go to a dirty place. I don't want to bring the holy name there. The boy says, don't worry. The holy name is pure. It's prophylactic. It's not part of this world. It doesn't get contaminated. It cannot become contaminated. It's Krishna himself in the holy name. Now, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was there, listening. He saw the whole situation. The boy was 10 years old. And then the, the person took the instruction and kept chanting. And Mahaprabhu came up to the boy. He said, what is your name? The boy said, my name is Gopal. He said, I'm going to give you another name. You will now be known as Gopal Guru. <laughs> Because you are actually a guru. You are teaching actually the science of chanting the holy names of the Lord. 
And that same boy, he was 10 years old at the time, he later became Gopal Guru Goswami, who was the spiritual master of Vakreshwara Pandit, one of the most intimate associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So um, that's another example of how the holy name, one should try to chant as much as possible. Because the whole process of Krishna consciousness is to always remember Krishna. <laughs> always remember Krishna. There's a statement in the Padma Purana which says, no, I'm sorry, not Padma, Vishnu Purana. In the Vishnu Purana it says, what is the great what is the greatest anomaly? What is the greatest misfortune? What is the greatest mistake? It mentions these three. And then it, then it answers the question, to forget the Supreme Personality of Godhead for one moment. That is the greatest mistake, greatest anomaly, greatest misfortune. So the scriptures emphasize the importance of, of always remembering the Supreme Lord, keeping one's consciousness fixed. But then you might think, well, I have so many things to do. I have to go to school, I have to do this, I have to do that. And how am I going to remember Krishna all the time? But Prabhupada said, just practice. <laughs> practice, practice, practice. In Bengal, they have a, a saying. It's, in, it's an interesting little saying. It's, just, it's within the common people. They say, Hate koro kaje muke bolo hari. <laughs> Hate koro kaji means work with your hands, and muki bolohari means chant the holy name. <laughs> so yeah, we can always, uh, we can remember Krishna always, even when whatever we're doing, wherever we are, whatever situation. And as soon as you remember Krishna, you are free from the effects of the material energy. In other words, you're in association with the Lord. And of course, the easiest and best and most recommended way is to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Of course, we have so many other activities and devotional service to do, but practice remembering Krishna always. And then uh, once we start practicing, it becomes more natural and more easy. <laughs> because Krishna will help. He says, oh, this devotee wants to remember me. So let me give my, my mercy to him. And Krishna will help. And when Krishna helps, the success is, is guaranteed. <laughs> okay, so this is a little bit about the glorifications of the holy name of the Lord. The scriptures are just full and it mentions in other places that any glorification of the of the chanting of the holy name is a uh, is an understatement <laughs> it's not possible to over glorify the holy name it's only possible to under glorify in other words it is so glorious that one cannot understand the glories of the holy name what this what this what do say about speaking the glories of the Holy Name. But we try anyway. <laughs> we try anyway. And so many stories on how, uh, by simply by chanting the Holy Names of the Lord, everything changes. I was hearing from one of my uh, senior God brothers, it was Naranjan Swami Maharaj, he was telling me, he was preaching in Ukraine and in Russia. This was many years ago. And he was telling me devotees were coming to me regularly with problems, one problem after another. This problem, that problem, Maharaj, I need this advice. I mean, they always go to the sannyasis. They think the sannyasis can solve all problems. You know, because, you know, sannyasi has that big S on his chest that means Superman, right? <laughs> you know, that means, you know, savior of the world. <laughs> so that's where they go. <laughs> Well, we, we, of course, we don't criticize that, but, you know, it's not like that. <laughs> but actually, it means servant. That's the S means. But it also means slave. <laughs> so he was telling me how throughout the day, every day, people were coming with problems. So he decided, I'm going to do something. I have to somehow or other 
lesson is these problems. So he decided every day when he would give a class, he would only speak about the holy name. That's all. And he did it for one year. So he gave every class for one full year on the holy name. No other subject. That was he focused that as the main subject of all his classes. And then later, and then after a year, he mentions he he told me he said more than fifty percent of the problems were gone. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> the problem is we don't have enough faith and enough time for chanting the holy names of the Lord. So kirtan is there, japa is there, and the holy name is always available. And Prabhupada said, you know, philosophy is nice, but kirtan is really the essence of our... And when Prabhupada was here one time, he was in Vrindavan, and there was this Vrindavan troop of these Burjabasis. They were really, really, really deep in, in glorification of Krishna. So they were doing bhajans for Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada was loving it. And he was listening it for, for, it went on for some time. And then Prabhupada turned to his devotees later on. He said, now we should just chant, that's all. <laughs> Every day, let's do, we should just do the full day of chanting, that's all. <laughs> and the devotees said, oh my God, we got this to do, we got that to do. We got that. So there was some response, you know, and kind of convinced Prabhupada it wasn't <laughs> practical. <laughs> No, so Prabhupada said, all right, but at least one day a week you should chant and the holy name and make that one, just one day a week and focus on that. And the devotees agreed, but I think, I don't know, it didn't actually happen. But Prabhupada writes, he writes in, of course in India it's, it's going on, but he writes in the Chaitanya Charitamrita in uh, Madhya Lila chapter 3, in the purport, he says that we should, in every temple in our society, we should adopt this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra Kirtan every night for three hours. He says that in the purport. You can look it up, it's verse 203. Madhya Leela 3, 203, he says, now we should, we should adopt this chanting of the Kirtan for three hours in every one of our centers everywhere in the world. <laughs> so when you listen to Srila Prabhupada, he speaks about so many things, but he always comes back to glorifying and the importance of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. One time somebody asked Prabhupada a question. Prabhupada said, just chant Hare Krishna, you'll get the answer. <laughs> it's not a, he wasn't dismissing the question. He was explaining how actually, when you actually chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, everything will become clear. Things will be under, easily understood. Because everything is there. <laughs> and of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given it the focus in our, in our uh, practice of Krishna consciousness. So special mercy is coming by Mar Mahaprabhu. Simply by chanting Hare Krishna, we're pleasing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu, I was just with, um, yeah, Sri Vikram Swami last night. We were having, we did a program in uh, Radhavindavan, and he was saying that Mahaprabhu would chant four hours every night doing kirtan with his devotees. Every night with his devotees, he would do four hours of kirtan, and in the morning he would go out and leave his place. Udila aruna kodana baj dvijamani gora amani jage tatari tatari baji loro gana gana jaramaji loro. He would go out singing and dancing and bringing his associates with me. They would travel throughout the villages and chanting and dancing. People would come out of their houses. Oh, it's Mahaprabhu with his devotees and they're chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamant. They would wake up to that every day. And then they would feel so happy seeing Mahaprabhu. Many times they would join in. Now Mahaprabhu spent most of his time just chanting and dancing and spreading the glories of the chanting and the holy names of the Lord. 
So we're doing that in our society, but on an individual basis we can always do more. <laughs> more and more and more. Chant, 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 can't, can't, can't. <laughs> no time. Prabhupada wrote a little newsletter when he was in Delhi. He was, it was the beginning of his Back to Godhead magazine. He had like one piece of paper on two sides. He would go and he would write an article and he would print it. And then he would take the printed copies and go to the Delhi tea stalls and then meet the people there. And he would try to offer them this little, you know, article he wrote for a couple of pice. And sometimes they say, oh, Swamiji, what you're doing is very nice, but we have no time. <laughs> no time. <laughs> so Prabhupada kept hearing that constantly, and then he wrote the next edition of his magazine. He called it No Time. <laughs> Got time for everything but Krishna. <laughs> no time. So we make time for Krishna, Krishna will make time for us. <laughs> okay, so there's, thank you very much. We can stop here. Any comments, questions, Maharajas, anything you would like to add or some corrections or Ram Govinda Maharaj and Maharaj? Yeah. Thank you so much, Maharaj. <coughs> in Sastra saying that Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, we have to always be associating with the devotees even while performing our devotional service. But the system of Bhajan Kutir is also there. Hmm. The Bhajan Kutir means when devotees stay in one place and do his bhajan. Hmm. So, how do we uh, understand this? Because into our association of devotees. And then bhajan kuti means just be in the, in the kutir, doing bhajan. The question is... Association of devotees, right. like you mentioned earlier that the devotees was always on his own and he would be going out, book distribution. Oh. Okay. So even doing service, we should do together with devotees. But remaining in bhajan kutir, we're doing individual bhajans, you mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not recommended. <laughs> and Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati smashes that. <laughs> what does he call it? Uh, what does that mean? Who knows that statement he says? I can't think of it. He would say, this is a cheating mentality. And then you, what is that statement? It's in Bengali, I can't think of it now. Um, yeah, he said that, you know, he said, this is not our, our recommended, you know, protocol for devotional service to go out and do your own bhajan somewhere. Uh, what is that? I'm trying to think of that Bengali, but I can't. Um, yeah, and to stay in the association of devotees and perform devotional service in that association, whether it's chanting or service or whatever we do. But we're also protected and we're also inspired in that association. And that's our movement, more, you know, kirtan. San means together, so kirtan with many. Even when our japa, we try to chant in the association of devotees. Sometimes it's not always possible for traveling or something, but that should be also the, the, the focus. Association with devotees is the foundation by which we, you know, get free from material attachments, get an opportunity to engage in service, and stay inspired in Krishna consciousness. It's also the platform of happiness, <laughs> spiritual happiness. So, um, 
Mm, yeah, so I'm still trying to think of that. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. He wrote about it. He wrote an article about that. I forgot what it's called. He called it cheating. <laughs> Uh, and then, then Prabhupada expands that he, want, yeah, he wants to go alone to his personal bhajan. He's just, he claims he's chanting all the time. People want to come to see him, but he's so, he's so elevated he can't take time to see people because he's absorbed in chanting the Hare Krishna. <laughs> Prabhupada said he'll just sleep or just think about women and money. <laughs> so it's not recommended. Unless one has reached the platform of, you know, pure devotional service. And even then it's not recommended. Even the pure devotees, they don't do that. They give their association, they travel, they preach, they inspire others by their presence. <laughs> So that's uh, uh, Bhajananandi, we call that. But our, our, our movement is Ghostanandi. Preaching movement, not cloistering. I mean, you have the example of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Before he left the world, he disappeared for from everybody, and and he went on did his own, you know, you know, uh, bhajan. But that was that was a, a, a rare case. It's not to be followed or imitated. And the uh, second question is how to realize Krishna is your realization will come by your practice of the chanting and your purification of your chanting. You can't intellectualize that or read about it or even imagine. It's not possible. How can something, two things be different and be the same at the same time? It's contradictory, but on the absolute platform, all contradictions are amalgamated into the absolute principle. And on the spiritual platform, there is no duality. <laughs> but if you want to realize it, it comes by way of mercy. So when you, as you make advancement in the chanting, you'll start to realize. Just like, do we realize we're not this body? We hear it quite often, we're not the body, we're spirit, soul. But we understand it's true, we know it's true, but coming to the realization of that is a, is a step up from the theoretical understanding. So in the same way, we, we accept that Krishna's name is not different than Krishna, but to realize it, comes with purification of the heart. <laughs> and how to have complete faith in Harinam? Well, that faith, you can just chant. <laughs> that faith is there. But you can also see everyone else is doing it. And they're, they're becoming happy. They're becoming free from material attachments. You can see the examples of others who are all around you. <laughs> that simply by dedicating your life to chanting and, and practicing Krishna consciousness, you'll be happy, you'll be free from anxiety, and uh, you'll make progress towards uh, loving Krishna. <laughs> we don't need so much evidence, just do it. <laughs> it works. <laughs> A little bit of faith has to be there. Faith gets you moving. If you don't have faith, just like if you want to go somewhere and you've never been there before, you might hear about the place from somebody else and you take their words on, on faith. And then after you say, oh, this person has been there so I can accept what they say is true. So based on that faith, then you make your move in that direction. <laughs> Oh, and the same with the chanting of the Holy Name. Or anything we do in devotional service, it has to be a little faith in the beginning. And then when you practice the faith, then you get the understanding. <laughs> the knowledge comes. <laughs> uh, like uh, it is said that Nama Akshara Nama Nahi means name is a uh, Nama 
is not only the syllables, mere syllables. It's, it's Nama Akshara Nama Nahi means the holy name. Sharanama means Harinam is not only mere syllables. It's not only mere syllables. Syllables means like uh -huh. words or like. What's the syllabus? Syllables. Like similar it is just mere letters or mantra like normally oh. but nam is different but i feel like i am chanting only mere syllables and oh you're not chanting nam you're not chanting the holy name you're just chanting syllables huh. but uh, that feeling is um, is wrong <laughs> yes the feeling is wrong but it's you're related. chanting Krishna's name. The realization Krishna's is name. not yet come that Nam. I'm chanting Nam, not Keep mere chanting, syllables. keep practicing chanting. Prabhupada would say, even if you don't get no taste from chanting, just keep chanting. Taste will come. Associate with devotees, read about the glories of the holy name, and uh, take a lot of Krishna prasadam. Because <laughs> that'll help you chant more and better. <laughs> In most cases, <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you actually can you actually accept the fact that Krishna's name is Krishna? Yes, I accept because All right, so of just keep working in that direction. Yes. When you first begin something, that you can't expect to come to the per professional platform right away. They say that when you want to get clean, you have to take a shower, so you turn on the water. So as soon as you turn on the water, you say, well, I'm clean. No, you have to go through the whole shower. <laughs> so it takes time. In other words, the process works, but it's a process. Uh, Adal Shraddha, Saru Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Anartha Nivriti, Nishta, Ruchi, Ashakti, Bhava, and Prema. So, prema is the ninth step out of the nine stages, but it starts with association with devotees mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and practicing the chanting, serving. So, it's a process, but it's susukam kartamavyayam, it's, joy, it's joyful, it's nice. Krishna consciousness is nice. You don't have to put on any show, all you have to do is practice. So, when you live in a material world, you have to do so many things to fit in and to, to achieve. Here, all you have to do is be sincere and practice, that's all. And the devotees will help you also. <laughs> Anything else? Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, today also is the uh, Disappearance Day of Srila Jiva Goswami. And one other great personality? Who? Jagadish Pandit. Uh, Jiva Goswami is considered the most prolific of all of our, you know, acharyas. He composed over 400,000 verses on, on philosophical teachings. He's also famous for putting together the Sandarbhas, the Satsandarbhas, which are really deep in the, the, the philosophy of um, the, the nature of the Absolute Truth and the process of realizing the nature of the Absolute Truth. Jiva Goswami, there's so much we can say about Jiva Goswami. He is, uh, he is the, um, the son of of uh, uh, Anupam, who uh, who was the one of the brothers, uh, it was Ruba Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, and Anupam, three brothers, and Jiva was Goswami was the nephew of Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. <laughs> He's very prolific in his writings, and uh, there's so many wonderful pastimes. I'll take some time and read about Jiva Goswami today and hear about his glories and pastimes. It is um, very edifying. To hear about the glories of the great souls is actually the essence of the practice of bhakti. 
Yeah, it's even more glorious than hearing about Krishna because Krishna is pleased when we glorify and hear about and serve great souls. It pleases Krishna very much. So, yeah. Sri Rupa Pande Rupa Sanatano Ragu Yago Sri Jiva Gopalago Six Gold Swamis of Vrindavan. Srila Prabhupada mentions that the Shikshastakam prayers were the foundation by which all of the writings of the, the six Goswamis were taken by these, those, six prayer, those eight verses given by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Jiva Goswami wrote so many books. <laughs> Sindharvas are actually the king of all of his writings. Thank you very much. So we'll stop here. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Harinam Sankirtan ki jai, Gaur Premanande. Hare Krishna. <laughs>